folks hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel so for episode five of uh, my 25 favorite guitarists today i'm going to talk about billy duffy uh which you probably know uh from the cult now back in 1985 i actually got a little bit tired of what was happening in music guitar wise there wasn't really anything sort of new that grabbed me you know, it was, you know, in the middle of that sort of 80s hair metal time at that point. And, uh, and I remember being in college and uh, on college radio and She Sells Sanctuary came over the speakers and I'm like, what the hell is this? This is so freaking cool. And, uh, you know, consequently, I researched it, found out the band was a cult. I bought that album, uh, which is the Love Album, which was their breakthrough record. And I've been a fan of the cult ever since. And as of Billy Duffy as a guitar player, um, you know, when he started off with the earlier records, well, um, Love and Dreamtime, you know, he was, as a guitar player, he was using a lot of effects, you know, a lot of chorus. Um, you know, the Gretsch White Falcon was his weapon of choice and, uh, you know, just playing really simple stuff and whatever. But then, uh, you know, as we all know, the electric album came out and he's just rocking it with the Les Paul through a Marshall. And I'm like, wow, man, like this guy's phenomenal. Right. And why I mentioned that too, is the progression of his playing. He's always seems to be evolving, like from what he did on a love record to what he did on electric. And then even further what he did on the Sonic Temple record. I mean, the guy's just, you know, a crazy good songwriter. Cause it's, you know, Tim and Ian, uh, writing the music and his playing just really, really evolved a lot in, a relatively short amount of time and uh man the guy's a straight up rocker um the sonic talent temple album i don't have to tell you i mean it was sort of like i consider it as kind of a marriage of you know electric and love the the two sonics kind of put together but man he just put it over the edge and then you know consequently records after that you know uh that i really love the cult you know ceremony which didn't get a lot of love but that's there's tracks on there where Billy's just straight up just playing his butt off, right? Great songs, great hooks, but man, the soloing on that is just next level. And then Beyond Good and Evil later on, which is their heaviest record, you know, and Billy's just laying it down. You know, the cult have gone through a lot of changes over time. I mean, there was a period in the 90s where, you know, they were really honestly i found they were kind of you know trend chasing trying to change her sound more of a sort of a grungy uh you know uh music of the time sort of thing but through all of that um you know billy and keep you know and ian their songwriting their songs have always been pretty damn good they've they've been able to morph but do it very very well and still write really really good music and billy just dials it in man whatever the the you know whatever the song requires whatever time period whatever it is he just has a way of dialing it in and absolutely playing you know whether it be you know the main uh theme of the songs there's songs that are basically all you know kind of theme you know like firewoman songs like that for example and then when he just solos and the little things he plays behind you know right up until the the the, the current album um you know midnight sun it's just you know he he's just constantly evolving and i find over time he just gets better and better and better um He's always had fabulous tone. His tone has always been great. You know, like, again, it kind of matched perfectly with the music of the time uh, that he was performing at that time, whatever the song, whatever the, the genre that they were playing at that time. Um, he's always been on the money. And, um, you know, he's not, um, you know, he's not a flashy player. He's not, you know, he's not a finger tapping, highly technical guy. Um, he's a, he's more of an old school, straight up, you know, guitar player, but his note choice is phrasing. Um, and he's just in the pocket. He's just one of those guys that, you know, a, as a guitar player that I kind of look to for, um, you know, for inspiration 
on his soloing and that. He's just he's just an absolutely fantastic player. Um, so what I'm going to do with this video is I always mention the three things that I kind of, my highlights uh, of a guitar player, why, I, why they're in my top 25. Uh, with Billy Duffy, his songwriting is just phenomenal. Um, the Cult, through their entire catalog, you know, of course, some albums are better than others, but, you know, there's always been some really, really good riff writing, some some just nice chordal passages, some just some very tasty playing, just some good writing throughout their entire career, regardless of whether they were chasing trends or whether they were creating their own trends. Just fantastic. Um, as, as, a, as a performer... Um, I've seen the cult twice and Billy's just, he's just a rock star. He's just got that whole persona, you know, uh, whether he's playing, you know, got the Les Paul slung low or he's playing the Gretsch white Falcon and, and for, <laughs> and playing the Gretsch white Falcon. I mean, that's, that's an Olympic event. I mean, that's a big, heavy guitar and kind of cumbersome, but man, he looks cool playing it. Um, and, uh, that was the second thing. And the third thing, and now I'm blanking, of course, uh, <laughs> But the third thing is his tone. Um, Billy, you know, he's gone from the very sort of rolling chorus -y type tone and then started adding, you know, a Marshall. And now from last I looked at, you know, saw Rig run down his. He's now using a combination of the, the rolling chorus with some Marshalls. He's always had fantastic tone. And one thing about Billy that I always, that, that kind of really freaks me out is he's only ever used boss pedals as far as I know. He like, loves his boss pedal. So, but uh, there you go. Um, in the comments, or any comments sort of below, I'm going to link uh, a video that I did a while ago. I'm going to link two of them. Uh, one is the uh, my ranking of the cult albums. Uh, Midnight Sun is not on that. I did that ranking before Midnight Sun, but I'm going to also link um, my review of the Midnight Sun record, which, um, you know, a lot of people... I don't know, didn't really take a shine to because it didn't sound like Sonic Temple. No, it sounds nothing like Sonic Temple. It's much more of a sort of an atmosphere, kind of moody type record. It's one of those things that you just kind of want to like put on and listen. It's not party music. It's just, you know, just sit down and absorb type of music. So, but there you go. So thanks for watching. Um, if you like what you see, please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing. I finally... The last video I say, said I was on the verge of 3,500. I've crossed that threshold. I want to thank everybody so much for that and supporting the channel. And uh, this is airing Saturday. So have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll see you next Saturday for Episode 6. All right. Cheers.